um, yeah, thank, thank you very much, uh, Laura, and also for the invitation to join uh, this edition of the Chico Space. So, yeah, I will talk a little bit about superconducting uh, gravity meters and I will try to give an overall of its contribution to the observation of the Earth system. So, to give a, a brief outline, uh, I will start with a brief introduction just for, for those who uh, don't know this uh, kind of instruments and the potential uh, that, that they have. And then uh, I will move directly into the main contributions in terms of geophysical uh, and geodynamic phenomena, uh, and also more related uh, to geodesy in terms of the, the, uh, the realization of a gravity reference frame. Last uh, but not least, I would like to give a, a case example uh, in the case of the SG that is installed in uh, the Argentinian and German Geodetic Observatory. So, from the very basics, uh, gravity methods or gravity me measurements in general uh, can be measured by different uh, approaches. In the past, we used to, to use pendulums, and in the past, in the very past. Uh, so, currently, they are, uh, they are not any more um, relevant for us due to the, 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 the precision achievable with, with pendulums, but nowadays we are mainly measuring gravity from the point of view of absolute acceleration uh, by using free fall, uh, the free fall principle, um, where we measure the time of, of a, a mass test uh, falling in a, in a vacuum chamber. So, and from the point of view of relative changes, so even relative changes between uh, points or stations or uh, relative changes along time, we have the classical method of spring mass meters um, and those uh, well-known uh, mechanical spring meters are those uh, related to, to field uh, measurements. And in the case of let me, yeah. in the case uh, of the superconducting gravity meters, now we are talking also about relative changes. So they are relative me uh, uh, meters, but we replace our uh, spring mass system with a, a, a magnetic levitation principle, where we have a sphere um, levitating in a very stable magnetic field. And to explain a little bit uh, the principle, I need, unfortunately, to show some technical details. And I will not uh, go into many details, but in general, uh, if we look at an uh, SG, we will have uh, a main layer uh, containing our, our main uh, measurement principle or system. And inside uh, this were we will have the proper uh, vacuum chamber with uh, the superconducting sphere. Yeah, we basically have um, a niobium uh, a sphere levitating in a, a in a stable magnetic field created by by a pair of coils, and gravity moves or causes movements in this sphere. Yeah. So thanks to a capacitor, we are able to sense uh, or to check the position of that of such sphere over time, and um, create a, a voltage with a with a feedback coil in order to keep or uh, yeah keep our sphere in a in, in a center position or in a in a reference position. Yeah. So, and why they are uh, superconducting? So, I introduced uh, niobium as as a main, um, uh, yeah, as, as the, the, the main uh, metal or property. Um, and in this case, uh, the niobium becomes superconducting uh, under very low temperatures. So our whole system inside the tower is um, under a 
helium um, um, bath uh, at about for a Kelvin temperature. So we, we need to, to, to keep a very low temperature in order to uh, guarantee the superconducting properties of the instrument. And why I am going into those details? Because they have a great advantage. So um, thanks to this, this kind of uh, measurement principle, we are able to achieve a very uh, high resolution uh, in, in the time domain and also a high precision in the, in the, in the time domain. Um, and of course, so here in the picture, we can, we can see at an example. So here we have the, the SG installed at Argo uh, together with the, with the measurements. Yeah? So the DWAR is the one that I have already introduced. And then we need a compressor in order to keep the pressure of helium inside the, 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 the DWAR stable. And also we account for a rack in, in order to um, for, for our registration uh, purposes. So, and um, yeah, so we are able to achieve a great sensitivity uh, and, and a very high stability of the instrument, of, of such uh, measurements or with such instruments uh, in terms of a very uh, low instrument drift. Yeah. So, but as every relative meter, it needs calibration. So our measurements, as I said, uh, we measure voltage and we need gravity changes. Yeah. So in order to do that, we need to estimate a calibration uh, factor that can be, uh, of course, determined with, with different uh, methods. And uh, in order to discriminate the instrumental drift, we need to compare such measurements uh, with repeated absolute gravity observations, uh, preferably uh, given by FG5 measurements. So what can we do? Um, measure gravity. Gravity is an integrative signal. Uh, and uh, thanks to the high precision achievable with, uh, with these instruments, we are able to study a uh, geophysical phenomena in a wide range of, um, of effects. Um, and if we look at uh, the picture, so we, we, we see periods or uh, frequencies and amplitudes and related amplitudes for different effects uh, that, that can be um, detectable with such instruments. And those, um, uh, those yeah, most important or most uh, um, large uh, contributions to the gravity signal are those listed here. Of course, as we as we saw already in, in the observations, the, our major contribution comes from from tides. Uh, but then we have a sum of other uh, phenomena that we are able to separate uh, and study. But of course, um, as an integrative signal, we need a careful modeling of all the effects, uh, summing up of larger uh, contributions in order to separate and study specific phenomena. So uh, onwards, I will uh, give a few examples, only a few due to time, of course, um, but for, the, for all the main contributions and a few examples on uh, key studies that are, have contributed in the in the past years. So, as I said, uh, we have the largest contribution coming from tides, uh, and through uh, a harmonic analysis of of the SG record, uh, recordings, we are able to uh, to set local tidal modes for the uh, for the stations. So, and this. Uh, Local tidal parameters can be used for different purposes, um, but first of all, of course, we are able to enhance uh, gravity uh, or tidal corrections for, for the station, not only measured by SGs, but also uh, for other uh, gravity measurements. 
but also these tidal parameters can be used to provide information on uh, how the Earth is deformed by, uh, by tidal forces in terms of log numbers, so elasticity um, properties, and then also to validate uh, theoretical Earth models and ocean time, uh, time models. And in, in this last, last case, uh, uh, if we account with a really long time, time series, we are able to detect uh, small contributions to tides uh, in the, even in the, in the animal range, as uh, shown by, by Sulzbach in 2022, where uh, we were able to uh, validate uh, dynamic uh, ocean tide models um, based on, on, on superconducting gravity observations. And we see that we are able to achieve very, um, uh, very nice tidal parameters for small contributions, even in the degree three uh, spectrum. Um, but of course, we need uh, for, for, for such uh, kind of studies, long time series uh, to be able to discriminate these, these components. If we move forward to uh, atmosphere or atmospheric and ocean dynamics effects, um, so unlike uh, the earth and ocean tides, the atmosphere contributes uh, in the whole spectrum uh, that we are able to measure with, uh, with SGs. And uh, of course, we need uh, then a precise modeling of such effects um, in order to study other uh, key uh, key components as, for example, could be hydrology. Uh, and in the case of uh, uh, this study, so we, are able, we were able to show that uh, even in, in, in the case of, uh, or we, we account for different methods to model atmospheric effects, uh, and those that provide the best type of corrections are those where we account for uh, numerical weather models in order to, uh, to account for 3D uh, air mass distributions. Yeah. And of course, uh, if we want to, to make a complete uh, modeling of atmospheric effects, we need an ocean response. So how the ocean responds to atmospheric pressure and winds, basically, especially but also including other type of effects like circulation, temperature, and salinity changes. So in this, uh, in this case, um, it was nicely uh, shown uh, by Boy and, and the Yard in 2008, uh, where we were able to validate um, ocean mass uh, variations represented by ocean dynamic models. So as she's in general provide a very reliable and precise um, signal that can be used to uh, validate uh, mass uh, uh, or mass distribution represented by, by these kind of models. And of course, in the same way, it works with, with atmospheric models in general. So regarding hydrology, I have already mentioned it, uh, but terrestrial water storage uh, has become uh, one of the main focuses in, in all scientific studies. So even uh, related to climate change, water resources, and natural hazard management, so you all uh, know them very, very well. Um, and in this case, uh, uh, different studies uh, with, with SG time series have contributed to the monitoring of water balance in general, um, but also in order to validate and calibrate regional and global hydrological models, as, as is, it was shown in Kreutzfeld uh, in 2010. So uh, this kind of, um, of studies uh, show that uh, SGs have in general a great potential but also a few challenges. So uh, as I mentioned, SGs are really sensitive, but uh, in, this, in, in this sense, they have a very local footprint. So uh, they are really affected with near uh, field uh, mass changes. So in this, uh, in this sense, we will need 
a, a detail or we need in general a, a detailed modeling of local effects, even for example, shielding effects from, from buildings. Uh, and in order to achieve uh, such kind of things, we need uh, a collocation also for uh, with with hydrological measurements at, at uh, different stations. But nevertheless, uh, we uh, there are very nice uh, approaches in this um, in this regard, and also uh, in terms of the validation of gravity uh, observations with. Uh, with satellite missions. So GRACE and GRACE follow-on are uh, very well known uh, to all of us and they can be used uh, or related to, to our hydrological uh, models in order to uh, test uh, uh, different or total water storage changes over time. Yeah, And in this case, uh, as she's provide a ground-based measurement, uh, very useful in order to validate those kind of observations. Um, but of course, as I have already mentioned, they, uh, uh, there are uh, a few challenges that uh, we need to face before, in, the, in, the, in the following years in order to uh, ensure the compatibility between spatial resolution uh, and footprints of each observations um compatibility of corrections and uh, uh, and also the distribution of of sg uh, stations uh, but nevertheless we have uh, very nice examples of um of gravity changes related to to hydrological effects uh, as can be also seen in the time series for example in the cell um, where we see a very nice seasonal variation uh, related to seasonal variations in whole Europe, um, but also some uh, extreme events related to floodings or uh, or droughts in, in 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 not only in a, in a local but also in a regional level. So. Uh, once we are able to model all, all these effects, we can also look for smaller signals uh, as, um, as some of, of these examples I, I, I will show. So uh, SGs can also be used for monitoring active volcanoes as, I, as in the case of the Mount Etna, Etna um, where a, a small network of superconducting gravity meters are uh, installed even uh, to, to study geothermal activity uh, as it was uh, done in, in Iceland, uh, or even related to the search of seismic modes um, or um, resonance effects uh, of, the, of the Earth core. So moving into geodesy uh, now, IAG has released uh, the uh, or has adopted in the in the past uh, in the past meeting of IUGG uh, the ITGRS, so the International Terrestrial Gravity Reference System, uh, and its uh, uh, its realization um, is based mainly on absolute gravity observations, but uh, in the case of gravity reference uh, stations. SGs can largely contribute. So if we see at the, at the current status on, on the idea on how to realize uh, the, the system adopted by IAG, we have different components. Our uh, key uh, uh, stars are the, the absolute meters, but uh, we need measurements uh, along gravity reference stations where we account for a stable reference of, of gravity. So uh, in this case, uh, SGs uh, provide a very stable and continuous uh, time series that can be used uh, to monitor gravity variations at such stations. And in this, uh, in this regard, uh, the International Geodynamic and Earth Tide Service uh, will provide for sure um, 
one starting point for the proposal of, of reference stations in the frame, in the, in the future reference frame. Yeah. So, of course, uh, we lack uh, for an homogeneous distribution, as we can see, uh, but, um, but they are able to establish um, a, um, a, a gravity reference function that can be used to monitor such, such changes. And of course, we have already uh, some nice examples, uh, as can be can be shown uh, by or are already uh, mentioned in, in GIGOS. And regarding the, the, the monitoring of of uh, the gravity uh, of gravity variations, we are uh, we can establish gravity reference functions. These kind of gravity reference uh, functions can be or are set up based on the combination of SG observations together with uh, absolute gravity observations, um, where once we uh, we are able to to establish a reference function, we are able, we know how gravity uh, um, uh, varies over over time in a very stable sense. So. Um, Moving to a specific example, I would like to introduce the Argentinian German Genetic Observatory. AGO uh, is uh, a genetic station uh, or fundamental genetic station located in, in South America, particularly in, in, in Argentina. And uh, it is worth to mention that it's the only station uh, that integrates different space genetic techniques um, together or complemented with, with a, a gravity lab accounting for an SG uh, and also with absolute gravity observations. This station uh, is also by you uh, may be already known uh, as it is a proposed core station. So uh, some studies uh, taking advantage of the SG time series have been performed. Uh, through a tidal analysis, we are able to establish Earth uh, and uh, Earth tide models, uh, and also to validate uh, ocean tide uh, models in, in in a global sense. And as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, so uh, also this uh, station has participated in, this, in the study of uh, Sulzbach, where also degree three ocean tides components were introduced. So regarding uh, non-tidal ocean loading effects, um, uh, the SG time series was also used to validate uh, local storm surge models um, proposed by, by Oreiro in 2017, uh, where a storm surge model for the whole area of the estuary uh, was proposed based on uh, tidal gauge observations. And um, a, large a, a large contribution to, to, to gravity variations was able to be explained by, uh, by such contributions. Um, in the case of, uh, of global non-tidal ocean loading effects, so AGO has also contributed to the validation of global uh, dynamic ocean models and also to the, to the improvement of atmospheric loading computations, uh, effects computations, um, where we were also able to explain a, a, a nice uh, part of the, of the remaining signal after removing the, the main contributions. And regarding uh, local hydrology, uh, a few studies were also um, introduced by uh, Mikola in 2019. Uh, or Penduke 2020, where uh, even local hydrological models were established based on, on local observations uh, or also for the estimation of amplifier related parameters. So, and they, they have also recently shown uh, some kind of potential in order to validate um, hydrological products. So, last but not least, uh, 
also AGO is proposed as uh, to integrate the reference frame, uh, the gravity reference frame, uh, and it, the time series has already shown a very uh, nice potential in order to monitor absolute gravity observations, as can be seen um, uh, from uh, from uh, the stability of the of the SG and um, some issues found in the absolute gravity measurements at the station. Um, so in this sense, so AGO is well suited uh, to become also a core station of the DGRF uh, on a regional level, um, and uh, for the moment one of the of the few. So as closing remarks, uh, I would say that SGs have contributed uh, largely to the study of the Earth, uh, Earth system in general. They provide a reliable and precise uh, validation uh, for, uh, for mass variations, uh, even for the atmosphere, ocean, and continental hydrology that can then be further used for other applications as well. Um, yeah, so there are a few, um, a few challenges, especially regarding uh, the validation of satellite gravity observations and also uh, the distribution of stations but they have shown uh, a great potential in this, in this regard as well. So, yeah, with that, uh, I would like to finish my presentation and maybe ask for questions. Thank you, Ezequiel, for the nice presentation. Are, are there questions or comments? Yes. Thank you very much for your nice overview. The question I have is, uh, you mentioned in your last sheet that long time periods are of uh, importance. And how would you characterize your control of the environment with mass changes, especially over long time periods? Because that becomes more important as well, I guess. Of course, yeah, and this is uh, still still an issue. So there are already nice examples uh, as the time series uh, from ECMWF uh, where we account for mass variations over time since the early 70s. So this could be a good chance to to uh, to provide a, also a very a continuous a mass a variability. But of course, any improvement in any model has to be also included. So uh, this is something that has to still be uh, uh, improved. Uh, or guaranteed, uh, but yeah, so offsets, for example, offsets in any kind of model are not really a, a critical point because we are measuring gravity changes, uh, but of course, in terms of stability, uh, long-term stability, uh, we, we need to, to ensure, yeah, definitely. Thank you. So work has to still be done, fortunately. Um, okay, the, the effects we can measure with these instruments are very localized, also very local. Mm -hmm. uh, to have a regional picture, uh, we would need a very dense uh, network of these instruments. Every 10, 20 kilometers or even no, so it, I think it, it mainly depends on the uh, on, on on the kind of study. So I would say that, for example, in the case of uh, of validation of grid grace data, we are not able to to uh, to detect in a very local. Uh, so we need some kind of smooth signal. Yeah, uh, and yeah. So the denser the the the, the, the network is. Of course, it's the better, but they are really expensive instruments, and uh, to guarantee a good operation is also not easy. So, uh, I would say that we need uh, an, an, an homogeneous distribution, um, but regarding the densification, it will all, all, always depend on the on how local the study is. The last question. These observations, these time series are available, and if yes, how? They yeah. are the pure observations or are 
So I get I get currently provides a superconducting gravity time series. So I get uh, as as an IEG service uh, under the umbrella of IEG AFS uh, provides a time series in in the same or in in a in a similar way as it is provided for Grace in in other services where we have different level of data. Level one uh, within IGES uh, is basically the raw data, and then we have level two and level three where they have some kind of uh, further processing. So level two uh, is clean data uh, with uh, with all the pre-processed uh, steps uh, done, and then we have level three uh, where uh, already uh, residuals are provided and all the major contributions are, are, are removed. Um, so yes, they are already available. They are free, freely available. And of course, level, especially level two and level three have also some uh, delay in publication, of course, related to the effort that is uh, related to the, to the processing of the data and the application of the correction. So, um, yeah, we need also some kind of uh, background information, of course, because uh, the processing is not easy, uh, and also the correction may, uh, uh, yeah, the quality of the correction is also is also always an, an issue. Uh, so the data is already available, yeah. uh, but uh, and, and through IRIS. Okay, 